It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is another DJ roundtable. Yes, it is always a great time. And it's 8 o'clock here in Central of the United States, Central Time Zone. Uh, I know we have people out on the East Coast, West Coast, and every coast. Uh, we got people all across the U.S. Yeah. Uh, and, and beyond. So we want to welcome you and thank you. If you're a new subscriber to the channel, thank you. If you're a longtime watcher of the channel, thank you. I appreciate it. We all do. We appreciate what you do for us and watching the show and asking questions. And hopefully you have a question or two. If you're watching this live, please make sure that you ask questions on here on Twitch. We want to answer your questions. The other thing is that if you're here on YouTube, uh, if you're watching this on Mondays, we drop at noon. Uh, please make sure you ask questions, say comments. But also on YouTube, do me a favor. Help me slay the beast other than anything else also known as, if I could talk right today, is the algorithm known as the YouTube algorithm. We all know that evil beast and we want to slay it. So when every time you give a thumbs up, every time you give a like, every time you subscribe, every time you make sure you get the bell icon running uh, so you know, it helps. It helps get us populated more and more DJs watch the show. So it's always great when you do that. So please do that. Uh, if I'm a little bit slow today, it's because the fact that I've been running since uh, 540 this morning, um, didn't sleep really well last night, had a little nap. Uh, my dog had to go for surgery today. Uh, she's fine. She's recovering. I go grab her tomorrow. So uh, the boss, as well as myself, are a little tired. So I seem a little slap happy. Please, <laughs> I do apologize to it. Uh, but, you know, again, it's such as life and such things goes on. Also, we have a fun thing coming up on, not this week, but in a couple weeks, we're going to have a guest coming on here. So mark, make sure you mark your calendars for the, well, I just lost it. Ah, great. Thank you. you thank you, uh, Google. Uh, calendar. There we go. Um, another one that uh, I am looking at the uh, what was that 23rd of July, right? I got. It. Hold on one second here. Yeah, it's the 23rd of July. I'm looking at my, at my calendar, and where the light is hitting me in the eye, it's great. <laughs> the 23rd of July, please mark your calendar for that because we have a guest coming on, and he has an exclusive new product that he is going to talk about here on the channel. And it is something cool we were talking about yesterday. I am not going any further than that. Uh, I can tell you it is larger than a bread box. And it is a cool item uh, we were talking about yesterday. And uh, the 23rd is uh, right now the date. He should have everything ready to go to launch the product. And hopefully we're launching it here on the channel as far as information to go get said product. Now, with that said, we have a lot of great DJs here, but it's also week of the 4th of July, so not everyone's here. Some people have family stuff going on and things. We are always surrounded by great DJs here. I have Indiana, South Carolina, and the great state of Wisconsin covered uh, tonight. And California, uh, Matt will be on in a moment or two. He has a client phone call he had to take very quickly before coming on here. Uh, he does apologize and will be on here shortly. So I wanted to start off at the table and ask you this question. Uh, things come up in life, and we all have friends, family, and so forth and so on. When things come up, such as 
I need to take care of my dog, my daughter, my brother, my cousin, my whatever, grandma, grandpa. When things come up and you have a gig, how do you balance the two? And what I mean by that, let's say my dog right now, she's going to need uh, physical therapy uh, for her knee surgery. And that'll be for the next few weeks. So luckily we don't have any gigs right now. That's what we selected right now to do this uh, said surgery. Uh, so we can concentrate on that. But what happens if we had a gig or let's say someone calls about this coming weekend, what would we do? Well, right now, Tracy and I are like, if, if someone called, unfortunately, we're not available. That's because our decision and we want to make sure we take care of our dog. Uh, we want to make sure she's taken care of and not in pain or anything like that. And she needs to be watched, uh, you know, just like a small child. <laughs> uh, but if she wasn't, you know, had in surgery, we would took it. Uh, it all boils down to how do you react when people or you have gigs lined up and you have stuff going on in life. You know, you get something happened to grandma, something happens to someone. You have a child, you have, you know, daughter, brother, sister, son, whatever you have, your wife, your husband. What happens when something happens to someone and you need to change your schedule around? If you're working at bars, if you're working at a club, do you switch shifts? If you're working, you know, doing weddings or special events, do you ask another DJ to cover for you? Do you make a phone call? Do you send out, uh, you know, smoke signals? How do you get that stuff covered? Now, I'm going to start with uh, Taylor and Jordan down there in over across the beautiful, beautiful Indiana. And um, they always have great information. And again, they're a husband and wife team. Uh, they both DJ. They both have a lot of knowledge. So I don't know if someone is down, one can step up and do stuff. But what happens if it's something that they both can't make? You know, I know they have a few employees. And they're lucky, they're blessed with that. But what do they do? What is their game plan? So I'll ask you guys, what is your game plan if something came up, like, you know, when the kids had to do a baseball game or do something and you had a wedding that day or you had an event that day, how do you overcome that? How do you work, you know, life work balance, basically? So um, we actually had something like that happen last year, last summer. Um, we got a last minute gig but we were getting ready to go on vacation with our family and children and um so we just one of our friends luckily was available and we just did like a crash course of okay you don't have to do anything fancy it was for like a like a little boat festival you know it wasn't like a wedding or anything but um gave him a crash course and how to dj I mean, he's like, he did have to say, <laughs> yeah for other companies before not to but basically what we but... needed and then if he had any questions um he would call us or text us and we just had him pick up the equipment he needed a few days or so, the night before i mean basically it was a series of like we were the the people the other people were calling it was a cancellation of a cancellation of a cancellation that we had picked up on like a Thursday. And we were leaving on Friday and it was a, or no, we were leaving Saturday morning. It was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. So we did it Friday. Um, and our buddy who kind of works for us on smaller events, um, he had DJed before, but yeah, he's not like a DJ, DJ. Like he, he can do it enough. For like some type of events and it, it was a boat race um so we kind of just winged it and i mean he was i was texting him yacht rock songs a lot of yacht rock like i mean i, I was all the way to tennessee and just texting him ideas these are awesome because like, he never like listened to yacht rock. that was the thing he's more of a rock and roll guy but it ended up going great yeah, luckily we, it went good. we were, but the thing was, we were saving someone else's, this, another company's ass. Who, sorry. <laughs> and then he was actually like, he got it last minute too. And then his water heater broke. And then he canceled because he had to clean up a flooded basement. So it was a series of events. Series of bad events, but it turned out good. And then um, we actually uh, also, he broke his leg. So I fell off a ladder on a Tuesday. And had, and had a wedding on Friday. 
Yeah. But it was only, thankfully, it was only a photo booth. We were, it was photo booth only. It was in February, so it wasn't super busy. But yeah, he broke his leg, had to get surgery, got a plate, 10 screws. And so I had to do a lot of the, I had to take up the brunt of a lot of the work that we had. So the question I have is, first and first, you're you're 100 percent now, right? Oh yeah, this was. It was my leg. Yeah. Well. Yes. <laughs> um, it happened. You're, you're, you're walking normal and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm sure there's. Last year. So yeah. the, the, when you went on vacation, did you get a chance to enjoy your? I know you had your texting your friend, your employee, saying, "Hey, you know, here's a song." So, but were you able to enjoy your vacation, were you, or were you worried about yeah. the gig? Oh, definitely. Well, the day up, because we were driving down while it was happening you know, in the car, it was like very nerve wracking. We're like, is he fine? Did he get there? Yeah, because yeah. normally when it it's either one of us or the, not just yeah, go and, out and do this. We don't have DJs that we can just send out to do things. We have helpers that help us. And have, you know, you're, in a you're, fa you're fading out your volume on your mic. He was in a band. He's DJed before for other things. So yeah, okay. it was just that we don't really send people out like that. But it was just, but as far as like breaking my leg, we just kind of came together, helped. Taylor did it with one of our employees. Yeah, we had a, everyone just was like, oh, you know, if you need help at all, you know, yeah. let us know. So everyone, luckily, around us was very helpful in that situation. Um, and they are always helpful, um, like my parents take the kids to their baseball game. And yeah, that, that's a great thing. Plus, you got to help someone out that needed help that couldn't do it for whatever reason. You still got the gig and you had someone you you trust and do it. And again, you had, yeah. I obviously, you said you had to do a little help with them because they're unfamiliar with the yacht, uh, yacht rock genre. But still, it's nice to know that you're able to take care of it and enjoy your vacation because that's a crucial thing. Because how much money you spend on vacation, especially for you and the kids, and you have all these things planned, and now all of a sudden you have this, you know, monkey wrench thrown into the gearworks, and you're trying to enjoy yourself. You're trying to have fun with your wife, trying to have fun with your kids. Uh, you're trying to have fun with your husband and with other, uh, any other family members. And here is a gig going on that a guy is, you know, he's good, obviously, but it, he's not like 100% uh, proficient in doing Yacht Rock. And you got to help him out a little bit and give him some stuff and help him out with that. And that right there can create a lot of stress. And thank goodness you got a chance to enjoy your vacation. Because the last thing you want to do, again, invest all that money and time and not enjoy yourself. That is probably one of the worst things ever to happen is not able to enjoy your, your time off. Yeah. So I'm going to go next to uh, – to DJ Brentley, uh, I'm sure you've run into it, especially with your daughter or with everything. I know you were just down here uh, last week uh, in Chicago visiting mom. And I know mom mm -hmm. uh, lives down here and you live up there in Wisconsin and you got to travel yep. down here and travel back and forth. How do you balance the two? When something comes up, let's say mom needs you and you have these gigs at bars or weddings, how do you overcome that? How do you change things around? Well... For doctor's appointments and things like that, if my mom is going to need me, she knows she needs to schedule it Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday morning. <clears throat> and so that gives me enough time to get, you know, leave lacrosse on a Sunday, get down there by Sunday night, handle our affairs Monday and Tuesday, and get back home Wednesday night. So that is kind of a given. And I can work around that a little bit if I had to. Like, I could give up a Wednesday to somebody if I really needed to. When it comes to a wedding, sorry, um, mom, I'll be there when I can. If I have two weddings in a row, guess what? She's going to have to wait because of my obligation to that couple. There's no way in God's green earth I'm going to do anything detrimental to their day. And my mom, luckily, is super understanding about that. She understands that, one, what it means to couples. And two, the financial windfall it is for me. When it comes to bar gigs, I'm a little bit less hardcore about it, but I've since 2020, I've missed one bar gig because I got really, really sick and had to call off. There was no way I could have conceivably done that night. 
um, when it comes to parenting, I try to plan everything out around my daughter's school schedule. So club season kind of is starts right after school is started and wraps up right when school is ending. So it gives me a lot more flexibility. And when it comes to, you know, the, the overlap, like soccer, for example, she knows I'll be at her first two games of the season generally. But after that, starting in May, Saturdays, I'm off. I'm working. And I rely, you know, make sure at least her mom or her grandma go to her games. And anything school related, being a DJ, luckily our, you know, our gigs are at night. So I can do, go to all of her school performances, all of the events, and actually show up on time, unlike other parents. But uh, yeah, it, this has made life so much easier in the being there for my daughter aspect of it. The sleep schedule is totally out of whack all the time. I'm always tired from it. And I'm sure in a couple more years that when my daughter is, you know, 14 or 15 and can get up on her own and do her own thing, I'll be able to sleep in. She'll be able to get herself to school and all of that. I, so I would, I would say, I would say that doesn't happen. Um, as you remember, probably when you were 14, 15, 16, uh, mom and dad still put my, I remind my dad coming and, and my dad, my dad was, my dad was six, six and he, he had, I wear a size 15 shoe. My dad had a size uh, 18. He would come in and kick the bed with his boot. Um, go, when you get, when you, he's like, get up, go to school. You got to get up to go to school. And again, it's, you start school at a certain time. My dad would start, you know, work at seven. He would get up at like, you know, 545, leave the house at 630 to get to the airport to work. And he's waking me up at like 615 and kicking me out of bed. And I was 15, 16, 17, 18 years, 18 years old in college, 19 in college. And he was still doing that. And, you know, I, I, I thank my dad for that. But sometimes teenagers, we all know teenagers sometimes just. They, they I'm don't lucky. Care. Even right now, Mira gets herself up for school, and when I won't get out of bed to take her to school, she'll be the one going, "Hey, uh, can you take me to school now? I'm ready." Oh, now, and she'll give me like 10, 15 minutes of leadway, and it's like, "Oh, I got to get up, don't I? I worked last night, didn't I? Okay, <laughs> let's do this, kid." <laughs> and she's all about it, but she has her, you know, being a girly girl, she wants to look, you know, proper, of course, of course. Which, and so with that, she's up at, you know, 5.45, 6 a.m., getting ready, having breakfast. Well, I'm still getting a half hour, an hour of sleep. So and I'm the, real lucky with that. And, and the great thing with your daughter, and again, she's been in some, uh, some um, equipment logs and stuff like that. She's, and again, I got a few times I got a chance to talk to her a little bit on here. Uh, she seems like a nice young lady, and she kind of reminds me of my own daughter at that age. Uh, and it's one of the things that it's fun. It's fun. Um, when they get older and they're 18, 19, 20, <laughs> it's a whole different world and a whole different thing. I'm sure. Uh, and one day you guys will all discover that, you know, as, <laughs> as parents, uh, Taylor and Jordan, I want to go back to you really quickly when, um, with the two of you guys work life balance, and I know you have the business you run and also with work and everything like that and with family, how much time do you try to give to the family and trying to do stuff for the kids? I know we talked, you had baseball games and stuff. How do you, do, how do you balance that? How do you do that? This is, I've been working on this with my therapist, my work-life balance, actually. It's hard, you know, because we have day jobs too. I'm a hairdresser as well, cut hair and all that. And he does IT. So on top of, you know, the kids, the weddings and events, work you know and or other you know jobs it's like I just feel like I'm on autopilot a lot <laughs> you know I'm just getting up and we try to yeah we definitely if we have weekends we try to we try to do things around the house to go on vacation or go out to eat or you know definitely yeah like we don't go to the bar and hang out with our friends yeah so yeah we're just it's our friends are our kids no we do have our friends but yeah if when we're free it's you know 
they have baseball, softball. They're starting swim lessons here soon. We've got a vacation planned. It's just very exhausting. Um, I wish we did have more free time. Sometimes, you know, even for like us, we don't really go out on dates anymore. <laughs> well, apparently, uh, single at the bar on Tuesday night is not a date. Not a date when you're did the one running it. I'm like, that's not a date. <laughs> <laughs> not a date. Yeah, when you're the one running it. Well, we well, got, we got maybe, maybe so the. It was a date. Maybe your mom or dad, you can ask mom or dad if they're not too far away. Can you watch kids? At least two of you guys go to like, I don't know, like Chili's or something or a I nice know, little restaurant and have like, to have dinner. Our parents are so helpful. And it's like, because we're always working, you know, and they, I always feel yeah. like I ask too much and I'm like, I want to, you know, ask again because it's when they're free, they do help. They're always very helpful. Uh, but yeah, we should. That's awesome. Time for us to go to dinner. <laughs> We're going to the Dells. We are going to the Dells at the end of the month with the kids. So, well, you're <laughs> going to be right by fun. right by Bradley's area. Maybe yeah. uh, Bradley can come down to the Dells. Cool. How far I've is the Dells been. from it, you? You're oh, muted. About ninety minutes. Okay. So, uh, you, I, I guess that maybe you know, again, you guys should talk to each other and see if you guys can hook up. Hey, maybe have dinner together or something. You know, you that'd be nice. Down? When are you guys coming down? Oh, July twenty seventh. That's a Sunday night. We come down oh, Monday and Tuesday. I think Wednesday too. Maybe Wednesday. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, see how we do the same thing you're doing there, Bradley. Monday, Tuesdays. Yeah. When you go on vacation, when yeah. you're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That that's might that's be... the hard part, you know. Again, it, it's it's all about life and life balance and stuff like that. And Mr. Dixon just came in. Uh, Mr. Dixon, how are you, sir? Glad to Hi, see you good. here. We're talking about life work balance, and we're talking about how when things come up uh, with people, with family, with kids, brothers, sisters, mothers, things come up in life, and sometimes you got to change things around. Uh, Jordan and Taylor were telling me about. They had a gig that was passed on from one DJ to another DJ, and they were on vacation, and they had one of their uh, employees cover it, and they had, you know, text back and forth some information. Uh, Brentley was talking about, you know, his mom, because his mom lives down here in Chicago, and he, of course, he's up in Wisconsin, and how he tries to schedule things to take care of mom. Uh, I haven't done Matt or uh, for uh, Hunter yet or yourself. But I'm going to go to Matt next. But I want to catch Dwayne up on what's going on. And I saw Matt. This, this is an exclusive here on the DJ Roundtable. Matt was doing laundry. He was folding his pants. <laughs> and again, this is real life. This is not like fake, like, you know, <laughs> a fake TV show. We're all working DJs here, just like you are out there. And yeah. the fun part is that you get to see things behind the scenes a little bit, you get to see Matt folding, you know, clothes and stuff like that. You see his girlfriend come walking in a uh, very nice young lady. She's got stuff to give him. And, you know, Matt runs out for dinner with the two of them and stuff. It's, 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 it's real life gets in the way of things. And how do you strike a balance between the two work life? And what do you do when something comes up, something comes up that, you know, Hey, you know what? Your girlfriend wants to go on vacation, but yet you have a gig. How do you like work that together? Do you try to schedule vacation time to go somewhere with her, even just like a getaway weekend? Or do you just try to do things with the parents or how do you do, how do you try to balance that between everything? Well, I try to keep, oh, our neighbors moved out. Um, I try to keep a, uh, like certain days open if like I know I want to do something. Uh, I mean, with me, everything just has to be planned in advance and I can't really plan anything on a Saturday. So um, I don't really. Sounds familiar. Like, <laughs> just like Brentley said, like, it's you know, it's a financial thing. Like when I tell people it, like girlfriend or whoever, you have paid time off. Our time off is not paid. So if we do something on a Saturday, we're missing out on $3,000 or more or less, whatever. And we don't have a chance to make that up. So I take vacations during the week. Uh, I'm going to Disneyland next Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, maybe Wednesday. I have a pass now, so it doesn't matter when. But uh, ideally going just, you know, I have next week uh, is a light week on purpose. So I, I kept Friday open because we're having a little party. Um, 
And then the week after that, I'm going to Santa Cruz, a little mini vacation, like Monday through Thursday, uh, as others mentioned. So, yeah, it, it's it, you kind of have to not really find the balance, but find time to take vacation when you can, like when you only have one event a weekend. Like this weekend, I have four weddings um, and one of them is tomorrow. So I have tomorrow, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So I had to like prepare Sunday and Monday and then finish up today. with everything. So if I don't have to do that and there's just one wedding, then sure, I could be done in three, four hours of prepping for the whole weekend. So then I could take a vacation, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have kids, so it's a little easier for me. Um, No, but but the thing is that you have, you have, I'm, I'm just, you know, kids are part of the equation, but it's part of life. You know, you have, you have parents, you have brothers, you have sisters, you have family, you know, and that's the thing. You have a girlfriend, she has family. And when people ask for things, you want to do stuff, you still have to balance your, your business and balance your family. And then again, like Jordan and Taylor, they have a regular job. Some people have regular jobs, you know. Uh, and they want to do that. And like, you know, Dwayne has a regular full-time job and D balance a DJ and then balance also on top of that family and fun, you know, so you're trying to work things. And again, have taken that time out. You need to take that time. You need to take that time, decompress, relax, think about things, go off again. That's just why I told, uh, you know, Taylor and Jordan, Hey, you know, go to Go to Denny's for breakfast or something, you know, without the kids, just so that you guys can just decompress, sit back, sip some, you know, cheap coffee, eat, you know, Grand Slam and just relax a little bit. But it's, it's, it's one of the things that you need to make time for yourself. You need to make time for the, your, your partner. And, you know, it doesn't matter if it's your wife, your girlfriend, you know, family, you need to make time for that. And that way you just pull yourself back for a little bit and go, I can take a breather for a second or two and I'm not trapped in this world that to worry about everything. And you know, again, sometimes it's certain days you could do that on. Sometimes you, you say, Hey, I'm going to schedule myself this week, not do anything this week, you know, take time off and do that. I, again, like, like I said earlier, my dog having surgery today, this whole entire week, 4th of July, Tracy took off uh, vac vacation time from her regular job. I do this full time. So we made sure we weren't scheduling anything. So we blocked off the, the calendar so we can concentrate when 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 uh, Tulip comes back tomorrow and we go pick her up tomorrow, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, next week. Um, we're taking care of her. Next week, she goes back. Tracy goes back to work Monday. Tuesday, she got, has to go down to the office. So Tulip's with me on Tuesday, which normally she's usually with me. She hangs out in the office here. We go outside a few times. She, you know, she, she walks around, but now she's going to need extra help because of surgery, her knee surgery. So it's one of the things that it's work-life balance. And this is someone, you know, and I say someone, because she's my furry kid. She, it's someone who I need to help, just like I would help my own daughter. Just like if, you know, a friend called me, if Jordan Taylor called me up and said, hey, can I need help? Can you come over here to Indiana? Can you come? I need something. And if I had it, I'd drive over to them. It's, it's those things like that you do. You help friends out. You help family out. You help those people out. And that's an important thing to make sure you have that balance. And I applaud you. I applaud uh, Taylor and Jordan. I applaud Brentley to take those times. I applaud you guys for doing that. And I want to go next to a cool thing in South Carolina who is DJing at the fireworks store. And we'll have the gig log up on YouTube. How do you balance life, work, and everything? Because I know that, like, you do a lot of things with your parents. Your parents, you know, they, they work and they have their, their jobs they have to do. Uh, but they also help out with the DJ world. And you have your gigs. How do you balance gigs and work and family and and you and youtube how do you balance all that together how do you do that what do you what do you do Well, I don't really have a lot of, of like free time in my hands to do whatever because I'm always cramped up inside the office 24-7 because my mom's always working, my dad's always working. If I get a gig, like if I'm in South Dakota to help my sister out because I know I went there back in September of last year, I got asked to DJ a birthday party. I was like, no, I can't come because I'm already in South Dakota and we'll be very tired. So I was just told... It was actually for a friend of mine that I went to school with, and I just told him, no, I can't DJ because I'm all the way in South Dakota. <laughs>
I've also with Sunday, like that that one Sunday when I was going to DJ like a bar. When someone asked me to DJ, I told them no, I can't come because I was going to church and you know it was before my sister went back to South Dakota, and yeah, so that's basically how I do it. And that that's the important thing again. Church is another factor there. If you yeah. are religious and you you know you want to spend time on Sunday, uh, you know as a Catholic, you know it's Mass for us or. For Matt, it's going to the synagogue, or if it's go, if it's you know someone else going to a church, it it all boils down to you know you need to spend time for if you're religious, spend some time in church and stuff like that. How do you balance that with your business? How do you balance that with what you're doing? And that's that's the hard part is someone calling you up saying, "Hey, um, I want you to come DJ this party." Uh, you know, and especially not around the corner, you know, North Dakota, South Carolina, North Dakota, that's that's not a, a 15, 20 minute or a half hour ride. You know, it's like me going to Indiana or up to Wisconsin, you know, to I could be I could be by Brentley in a few hours, you know, uh, it, it's 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 one of the things that it's not a round the corner ride for you. That is, you know, a, a farther distance. And again, balancing the two halves is hard. And how do you how do you do how, how do you do? everything at the same time you can't and you t you take time for yourself right you take some time and relax and i know you're going on some vacations you want trips and stuff but you take some time to relax right yeah i, I do because we're getting ready to go on a disney cruise in september to help celebrate my 30th birthday and shortly after i come home i got a dj a wedding so that's it and, and i think that works out and in the summertime, the spring, we never really get some time off from the office because we're there all the time. We don't have we don't have any time off until the fall or winter when everything closes for the season. And that that's the that's the thing. Again, you're taking some time. You're celebrating your birthday. Happy birthday to you! Uh, you know, it, it's one of the things you have to do. You have to balance yeah. that time of working and balance that time with everything else. And you may not be busy in gigs, but you're busy with other things, helping your parents out, doing stuff around the house. It's it's sure. not just you know working. It's 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 just doing things in life in general. And that's the thing. Yeah. Sometimes you got the old saying is you got to stop and smell the roses. Sometimes. So yeah, right. on, Mr. On Sunday, yeah, on Sundays I'm also busy serving with the kids ministry, and they need me a lot because we're really strong on teachers because we're still a new church, getting everything situated and. It's gonna be hard for me to take some time off from church if I do have a DJ gig. And that again, that's a hard thing. Work life balance. So, Mr. Dixon, uh, how do you balance work life? And what do you do if you have a gig? You have a gig lined up, and all of a sudden, mother, father, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, cousin, child, dog, cat, whatever decides, hey, you know what? I, I I need you. I need help with this. Or I need I need I need, I need to go to um a doctor's appointment. All right, hey, I want to go on vacation. How do you balance and how do you take care of that gig that you have? Do you do you try and work things out? Do you try to bring another friend in? Do you try to schedule things at certain times? And then you also have a regular full time job too, which I know soon in August you'll be blessed with being retired from your full time job. And then concentrate more in the DJ world, but how do you balance between you know a regular full time job, uh, your your business, and your life in general? And how do you overcome those you know gigs that you have to cover that things come up? Uh, one, I have over the years I learned that there's always tomorrow. So if I if I get to it, I get to it. If I don't, then. I just don't, and I don't try to stress myself out. I used to be a person that felt I had to do this, that, and the other, and it has to be done at a certain time. But I learned over the over the years that don't work out because you get stressed out, and then you end up in the hospital and all that kind of stuff. So I learned you to don't um, want you there. <laughs> yeah, so I learned to just do do things in moderation, and then when I do things, since I wear multiple hats. I learned to just focus on one thing. So if something's coming up DJing, focus on DJing. Then after that, if something else is coming that I have to like for school, I have to focus on school. If I'm playing out or at church, focus. I have, you know, I have a certain time where I just focus on that and 
not try to worry about other things. And then the other thing is I try to work work around each other. So for example, I don't have, I'm not fortunate to have like gigs book, you know, back to back to back to back, but I do have gigs booked during a certain time of the seasons, like towards the end of the school year, it's my busy time. The beginning of the school year is my busy time for, you know, like going back to school or graduation parties, birthday parties, then around the holidays, that's a certain time. So I know not to schedule anything outside of that that might interfere with that. But then when I know that I have that downtime, that I can focus on taking trips or doing something for myself. But I just learned to just take things in stride, not try to stress myself out and do more than what I can because that I always end up, it always end up worse for me when I do that. And yeah, that's the big thing is taking time for yourself, you know, and Matt, if you got to talk to your, uh, talk to your girlfriend, go ahead and talk to her. I see her over your shoulder. Uh, and- no, I just ignore her. No, don't ignore her. <laughs> she don't ignore her. Take care of her. Make sure you make her I'm happy. Losing, she's I'm, a nice losing lady. I'm losing socks. I'm losing socks. She's a nice. She's a nice woman. So I, I don't, yes, I don't yes. want her mad. <laughs> uh, you know, and that's the important thing. You need to send time to take care of yourself, and that that's why I was saying with with Hunter taking you know time, with Taylor and Jordan taking time, with Brentley taking time, with Matt taking time. It's important that we all take some time. And just you know, kind of relax. Even it's 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 if it's you know a staycation, you know your your home, you know just doing stuff at home, doing some few things around the house, just you know mentally you know relaxing a little bit and going, oh okay, fine, great. I don't have to worry about you know this or that for a minute or two. But sometimes, like with Taylor and Jordan, they got kids, you know, and Brentley's got a daughter. Um, you know, uh, fa- people have family, people have things going on. But you still have to make time for yourself. You still got to have that time to recover. And I want to go to the, the next DJ here to find his secrets on doing things. And that is DJ APOC, a.k.a. Tommy. Uh, I know he's got school. He's on vacation right now. He's on break. Um, and he is uh, back down here in the Chicagoland area in his, uh, in his DJ command center, uh, trying to take over the world and try to be the next Tiesto or uh you know uh cas uh what cascade or one of the cool big djs uh i always see his social media he has some great stuff there on instagram so make sure you follow him on youtube to bounce back to instagram and follow him on instagram as well and make sure you follow all the djs here on social media all the links are down below if you haven't followed them already you should be following them uh how do you balance your work life uh experience you know how do you overcome you know having a gig again you have school you have tests when you're in school you have stuff going in school but yet you're also doing nightclubs bars and events how do you balance that if something comes up let's say um and i'm not trying to say anything bad but let's say your mom your dad brother sister cousin something comes up with them with family and you got to take care of that but you have a gig for that weekend how do you overcome that how do you take care of that uh, event? Do you work the event and then go help whomever? Or do you try and schedule things around things? And how do you make sure that you have time for yourself to kind of just maybe just go up to the Channel Lakes and go tubing or hang at, you know, hang out on a beach somewhere, go downtown and hang at the, you know, North uh, North Avenue Beach? How do you do that? Uh, well, it would obviously depend on the scenario, but I've been really lucky to have built up a good network of DJs within uh, all the markets that I typically play in. So if anything were to arise where I needed to cancel on a gig last minute, or I needed to even potentially leave the gig early because of some sort of emergency, I've got, I've got a wide range of people that I can trust in whether it's here at home or if it's up at uh, Wisconsin that I could message and they could come through for me if I needed them last minute. Um, I think that's important to network and connect with other DJs and other uh, event vendors or professionals that are in your field because you never know when you may need them or even if another vendor might need them and you can provide them with a referral. Yeah, and that that's a big thing right there. It's uh, it's hard because you 
you want to do the gig, but sometimes again, life comes up, things happen, you know, like, you know, like with Jordan, he broke his leg and he, Taylor was nice enough. She could, she was able to do a gig, you know, and I'm sure Jordan was worried about, you know, cause again, it's, it, it's his partner in crime and his partner in life. He wants to make sure that, you know, she's okay, but it, it's hard when you have a, you know, again, you're sick, you're, you have an injury, you have this, uh, you want to be there. It's great to rely on people, but still, uh, Tracy and I had uh, not this last year. Uh, yeah, the last year in twenty three, uh, beginning of the year, we got COVID, and we got a hold of another, another DJ, and we seamlessly changed everything over to that DJ. Uh, of course, they got paid everything for the gig, and we told the couple right away. We went a Zoom chat with them right away and said, "Hey, we have COVID. You, you know, we don't want to bring COVID to your wedding. We don't want to make it a COVID wedding." Um, so how do you overcome that? You know, how do you get past that? Because the fact that it, things like that happen is you have to be prepared. And like you said, Tommy, having someone you can rely on and say, Hey, I I'm sick. I'm not feeling well. Can you do me a favor or do me a solid and take care of this? And again, just like Jordan Taylor was saying earlier, you, you missed it uh, in the beginning is they were talking about how they became like third or fourth hand on a gig because the other DJs couldn't do it. And they had a, a vacation go on to, but they had one of their employees cover it and make it and cover successfully. And that right there is a big, huge thing, having that network of other DJs and friends that you can rely on. Um, and that's an important thing. So, but here, here's another question. Do you make time for yourself to enjoy and relax? And what I mean by that, do you have like, are you scheduling this summer uh, to go on to like a little vacation and maybe going away for a weekend, going away, again, tubing on, the, on a lake somewhere, a river somewhere. Uh, yeah, I mean, we had a, my family and I, we were on a vacation earlier in the summer. So I knew uh, to like set those dates aside. And that was like a week that we were gone and I was in Florida. Um, and then like, we're going to be up in Wisconsin a little bit later in the summer. So yeah, I break up uh, some of my weekends with like, we'll have a, a trip of some sort. And then um, even a little later in the summer, I'm going to be up in uh, Green Bay playing two nights at the bar that I have my residency at up there. But the day in between, I'll be free. So it'll give me time to go walk around or hang out with people from the area and um, give myself time off. And that's the important part is making sure that you um, you have that. You have that flexibility that you can actually take, take time and go, I, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to... Um, I need to do things. And that's that to me is a huge, huge, huge thing to do and spend time with your, you know, with your girlfriend, with your friends, with your, you know, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, whomever that you're dealing with and just be able to veg out a little bit and take that mental break and physical break. And that's the important thing. I'm glad to hear everyone here is taking time for themselves and taking time, especially Again, this is halfway through the year. We just got done with June. We're into July. It's, it's right before the 4th of July uh, of 2024. I'm glad to hear that people are taking time off and taking time for themselves and scheduling vacation and, and doing things because we need to take care of ourselves. So we're prepared for that event and that gig. If not, we're not mentally prepared. Things can happen, run awry, and that we don't want. Um so next question coming up here, this is going to be a, a quick one. It's going to be a, a yes or no kind of thing. Um, would you, this is a would you thing. Yes. Would Would you take a gig? Yeah. Okay. Matt said yes. So there you go. <laughs> There's the, the definitive answer right there. Yes. <laughs> would you take a gig for a dollar to help a charity? That's a charity that you approve and you like, and that you want to help or would you take a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, whatever amount you want to look at, from a um, a party that, well, let's just say it could go awry very quickly, and it, you have a, a higher likelihood of having equipment damaged or high likelihood of something else happening there that you know may or may not be good. Uh, what would you rather do? A guaranteed gig that's you basically going to pay you a dollar, or you're going to get you know, accolades for a nice charity is going to help you or is it the money and it's like a questionable thing like 
yeah, this party is, is it's like a uh, frat party or it's uh, this kind of party or that kind of party that, you know, people are going to be like jumping off, you know, into uh, rooftops, into pools and stuff like that, something crazy like that. What do you rather do? You rather do the uh, the gig for a dollar or you're going to do the gig for $10,000? So I'm going to start you. with Jordan Taylor with this one. Do you do the dollar gig or the ten thousand dollar gig? Again, the dollar gig is a charity, nice, safe, easy. They thank you. They give you a nice meal. The ten thousand dollar gig is, uh, it could get you in in trouble. <laughs> I think I'd go with option two. The ten thousand dollar <laughs> gig. It sounds fun. Um, yeah. I mean, I like a good party, but um, I mean, that's a tough one. Yeah, I, 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 I think you mean more than just a party that like a sketchy party. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I, I like to help a charity, but I also like to have a good time, so that's a hard one. I also would like ten thousand dollars, I could do a lot with that. <laughs> so, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a saying, I'll make it easy for you. Yeah, cream, cream, cash rules everything around me. Ah. <laughs> uh, so I I'd, I'd take the if, other one. I don't I don't if, care about a charity uh for a dollar. I'd rather getting out of trouble and equipment I broke is less than what I made, then we're fine. As long as it doesn't cost me much. Yeah. Exactly. I, I'm not talking about like you know getting in any kind of bad trouble. I'm talking about like you know they want you they want to party around you and but someone may knock over Still a speaker on you. or may knock into. If you got a TV display, you may break your TV display by accident. It's a likelihood that because it's that kind of a rowdy party that people are doing I, again, they're doing cannonballs off the top of a roof into a pool. They're they're you know they're just basically it. it think I, of think of a party movie you see where the DJ's DJing and people are just crammed in there, jumping up and down, and there's popcorn flying and you know people are pouring I think it's drinks. Still go with the too i'd still go I think when you put too. it that way it's actually even better i would charge them <laughs> three times my rate and bring my cheapest equipment. well it's ten thousand dollars or a dollar so uh <laughs> taylor and Duran saying ten thousand dollars matt saying ten thousand dollars tv <laughs> and some fifty dollar speakers and we'll, we'll party in. okay 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 cool thing what would you do charity or a ten thousand dollar gig uh, charity because it's good service and um, it's going for a good cause. And I actually DJed for a charity last summer. It was for the Down Syndrome Society and they won a lot of money and it was an awesome and I actually did it for free. So with any charity event, I would actually do it for free or church events. I would do for free family games. I would do for free. So I wouldn't mind. Well, you're, you're worth, you're worth, you're worth money. But again, a charity gig here and there, I've done them too for free. That to me is an important thing because that helps yeah. out. Yeah. Living you know, here in the south, yeah, that helps them the out. South. Yeah, living in the south here, where I don't have much money, I've learned to be thankful and just to do it for a good cause. Sometimes your soul is better off than the money in your pocket. It, it, it oh, yeah. is very true. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go to Tommy, who is also uh, uh, known to have parties and work at parties and do parties. What would you rather do? You'd rather do uh ammo house on steroids that you know <laughs> damage of equipment it's more likely gonna happen, or is it uh the charity for a dollar it helps out a great cause that you really believe in? I don't know. I've done some pretty crazy parties before. I did one at Halloween. I was on a balcony that was shaken, but <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've done some charity things too, and those are good, but ten thousand dollars for a fun party it sounds like a pretty good trade-off to me so i think i'd go with that one okay okay so uh, matt taylor jordan and tommy all four well all, all four of them are saying that they would do ten thousand dollars cool thing so far is the only one that would do a charity now me i would do the charity and the reason why is this i value my equipment and i don't want to destroy equipment and also I'm I'm older. I don't care about a bunch of drunk people around me and I don't want stuff thrown at me and stuff like that. Can I do DJ it? Sure, no problem. That that's I can get people dancing, having fun, doing stuff. That's not the problem. The problem is I don't want to destroy equipment. I don't want to ruin things. And I don't want to deal with those kind of craziness. So again, it, it's this this is where age is sometimes a little difference between it and how you want to run your business. You know, again, 
Uh, it's like anything else. So next, I'm going to go to Brentley, which I know he's a party animal. He does it every week at some of the bars. And you can catch some of those bar patrons on Code Blue Cam on YouTube. Um, Yes, if you're uh, on YouTube right now, go to Code Blue Cam and look for lacrosse. There's a lot of, uh, let's say, crazy people in lacrosse that would um, – would would make the channel a problem because a lot of body cam footage up there than being um, in deep trouble with the police. We don't want to be in deep trouble with the police. I never said Brentley's on there, but I'm sure he probably can watch it and probably may see a few patrons he's seen at bars or at restaurants or people he knows around town who are the uh, the numbskulls up there. Uh, but also, oh, yeah. he always says Wisconsin's a party place. So as the party capital of the Midwest... Would you do ten thousand dollars for the crazy party that you probably damage equipment, or one dollar for a great charity that you care about? See, there's a win-win for everybody in this scenario. I'm going to take the ten thousand dollar gig, and I'm going to go buy five hundred dollars worth of crappy equipment. <laughs> so when that crap gets knocked over, I'm only out. I'm out nothing, because then. I'm going to take half of the money I earn from that and give it to that charity and keep the other half. So everybody wins. Okay. Okay. See, Matt, Matt's like, yeah, that's, that's a good way of doing it. And Taylor and Jordan are like approved. And I think also uh, Tommy's also over there going like, yes, that's the way I would do it too. So uh, I mean, Dwayne. I, uh, all, the, all those events I do for like the special needs group and uh, one other group in town. I'm doing them for free anyway. I don't care. It's not about the money at that point, especially like DJing the special needs group because those kids don't have anybody looking out for them. And the three or four dances I do for them a year, it's like their biggest night of their year, and I'm real happy to be there for them. So be able to give them some cash on top of that, wow, yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. Plus, you know, again, $10,000, not some bad. Even you gave a $500 donation to the charity – and five hundred dollars equipment, you're still walking with nine thousand dollars. That's a good amount of money to walk away, around with, and pay some bills. You know that that's not a bad thing. So, Mister Dixon, I'm going to come to you as my last one. If you had choice between a charity paying you one dollar or a crazy wild party that more likely you're going to have equipment that damaged for ten thousand dollars, which one would you take? Ten thousand dollars because I can always bring my crappy equipment. And then I could always um, have stuff to try to salvage something. But basically, I take my cheapest equipment because I can always buy that back. Then I can also use the extra money to pay for my muscle. So if I have to fight my way out, get on out. But I still make Well, a, no, 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 no fighting. It's just, you know, just craziness. I, you know, again, people doing it, – it, think about a movie where people are doing cannonballs off the roof into a pool. You know, it's fun. It's just no, – no, there's no illegal things going on here. That, nothing illegal, just party animals, drinking, having fun, throwing popcorn around, that kind of stuff. You know, like you'd see it in a funny movie. Nothing nothing malicious. No one getting hurt or anything like that. Um, I would never, you know, never, never say that, but $10,000 in equipment getting damaged or $1 for a charity. And, you know, you are kind of surprised. I thought for sure, Dwayne, you'd go for the dollar and be like, Hey, I don't want to deal with the, uh, the numbskulls, but, uh, you know, but $10,000, that's, that's not like easy money. Just go in there, <laughs> play some rock music or whatever to get them hype. And then make sure you know that, um, the escape exit, as soon as your time is up. Make sure you get paid ahead of time and then dip. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, I, I was yeah. Again, this is this is the thing. This is the reason why I ask these questions because it's always interesting how everyone thinks and everyone does things differently. This is not a yes or no question, right or wrong question. It is what would you do question. And I want to hear from you guys out there on YouTube when you're watching this. What would you do? Would you do the party for ten thousand dollars? That more likely you get gear destroyed, or would you do the charity for a dollar? That's a charity that you really, really do appreciate and do really do care about. So you tell me out there in YouTube land, what would you do? Would you do either one? Would you do neither? Would you do, like Bradley said, do the one for $10,000 and then go to charity for a dollar 
you get best of both worlds and then donate a few bucks to the charity. Well, again, that's that's entirely up to you how you want to do that. Oh, man, it, it's it's always amazed me how fast an hour goes by and how quickly it goes by and how fast these days go by, especially with uh, the show. And don't forget, coming up in next month in August, um, we're going to have our 100th anniversary come up very quickly, 100th show come up very quickly. Um, so we're going to do something special for that. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Uh, I'm going to try and see if we get some of the uh, original um, – People on the uh, DJ round table to come back, maybe do a special uh, shout out or stop by or say hi or stuff like that. Uh, try and get Abe from Maine to come in and have him uh, say hi because he's been a while since he's been here. I know he's got his family and kids and stuff like that. He's doing stuff, but hopefully we'll see. We'll have to see how we plan things out. Don't forget coming up on the 23rd, we're going to have a special guest launching a brand new cool product. Here on you, uh, here on the show on YouTube, on uh, on um, on Twitch, and on everything else that we have the show on, it's going to be a lot of fun. It is a product that is pretty cool. Again, we we're talking about yesterday. It is larger than a bread box, so it is something that is a uh, decent sized item. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but what he is saying. It sounds pretty cool, I and mean, you will be the ultimate judge uh, with your uh, with buying one or not buying one. And I'd love to hear input when he does launch it, and you guys can ask questions live. Again, that's coming up three weeks from today, so make sure you mark your calendars for that. You guys want to definitely want to be here for that. Other than that, hopefully you guys enjoy yourself, have a safety and happy fourth, and don't forget, cool thing is doing his fireworks. He's this way on me on the board. He is doing fireworks at the fireworks store right by him in South Carolina. So make sure that if you're in the South Carolina area, you go stop by, say hi to Cool Thing, give him a high five. Make sure you give him a Dunkin' Donut coffee card because that's what he likes, Dunkin' Donuts. Give him a coffee card so that way he can go get a coffee after work. And also give him a high five and say, hey, I saw you on the, on the uh, DJ Roundtable show and enjoy some great music, great tunes at the fireworks. Other than that, Everyone here, I hope they all enjoy a happy and safe fourth. Get to enjoy your family. And again, if you're working and you're doing things, sometimes you need to take some time off, relax. Just remember, if you don't take time and you don't take time away from everything, it gets to you. You get grumpy. You get wound down. You're tired. You need to have that break. You need to take that time. So enjoy. So with that said, I'm going to have Tommy take us out tonight off the show. Uh, as always, Tommy, you always have a great smile and always have some great wit. Uh, please take us out for tonight. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll see you again next week. Uh, have a great Fourth of July weekend. Good night, everyone. Please subscribe. Peace.